All right, guys, tonight is March 29th, our last team call of March 2017. Can you guys believe that? Three months into the year already, and we were heading into April, which I am especially excited about um, because, as you guys know, we have Super Saturday on April 8th, and um, from being in the wall, which is a page for Five Star Diamonds and Above, um, we are going to be getting some really incredible announcements at Super Saturday. So I really, really hope that everybody knows where theirs is, is that they're getting to one. Um, if you do not have any slightest clue what a Super Saturday is because you're a brand new coach, you're going to go into your coach online office. You're, first, you're going to ask for up one. I'll give you this. But um, you're going to go into your coach online office, go up to the news and training tab, click on events, Super Saturday, and find the one closest to you. Um, these events are so important to your business, guys. Um, I know that I literally reinforce this every single time there is an event. Um, but I think a lot of times, and when I did, when I talked to somebody about this from corporate, I was just like, I feel a lot of times, like, especially for me, I'm a full-time coach. I feel like kind of alone in this at times, you know, like I feel like I'm by myself at home going through the trenches and these events kind of allow me to go out there and network with other coaches and just remember that, Hey, when shit's hitting the fan for me, it shouldn't hit shit. Shit is hitting the fan for other people out there too. And it's just, hearing these announcements from corporate and getting to hear from these guest speakers, seeing these transformations and everything like that. It's just, you gotta go, you gotta be there. And I think like the only time, I mean, it's, it's like $20, $20 maximum, depending on what size your city is. Um, but the reason being is cause I'm on a market account. So I can tell you that the reason they charge you is because they're paying for the venue. So it's maximum based on where yours is. So if it's like a big, big super Saturday, that's usually why there's a charge. But if there's if it's a small one, it's it's free. I mean, the ones in Knoxville I went to were free. So um, go and try to find out where your Super Saturday is. Um, I'll make a post on our team page showing you guys how to find that again. Um, but post in the comment section right now if you're going to one, um, just so we can. I want to see which ones you guys are going to because I know that we're all across the country. So I'm excited about that. Albany, Indy, Denver, awesome. Look at these. And like I said, newer coaches, if you have no idea what the heck we're talking about. I'll make sure that you're tagged in a post in our page. Pittsburgh. Awesome. And we have a lot of Pittsburgh coaches. Um, boss. Ooh, Boston. Katie Ann. Switching it up. Um, yeah, we have a lot. Of, oh, yeah, Rebecca's going to Pittsburgh, too. So, yeah, we have a lot of Pittsburgh coaches. So, if you're in the Pittsburgh area and you're a newer coach, network with the people that are going. And you guys can meet up there. It's going to be awesome. I know that they all met last time, too. El Paso. See, we have, we have people all over. Um, so, it's pretty awesome. Okay, so that's that was announcement number one. Two, I do want to welcome our new coaches. We have a lot of new coaches on here right now. Um, so if you have a new coach on here, please unmute yourself. And even if they're not on here, um, still unmute because I want them to watch the recording and I want them to hear you. So whoever wants to start, unmute and introduce your, your new coaches. I'll go. Um, Melanie is on here. I see you in your car. She's actually like, going to um like a business conference so i told her to try to hop on if she can and obviously she's already dedicated because she's literally in our car streaming us right now but um i just announced her as a coach today she's been in my challenge group she's been killing it and i'm just really excited that she's here yay welcome to the team melanie anybody else have somebody okay. i have two Go ahead. um Maggie, she's going to watch the recording, I believe. And Deanna said she's going to try to jump on tonight. Those are my two. Maggie's a new old coach. She's going to give it another shot. Deanna's new. She's super excited. Sorry, I'm sick and dying. So. Oh, we'll feel better. But welcome to the team, guys. We're excited to be here. I have two new as well. I have um, Sarah and Jess who will be joining us. Um, I don't think either of them could get on tonight, but I am super excited to have um, two new girls to bring to the team. Awesome. Welcome to the team, guys. Whenever you watch the recording, we're super excited you're here. Anybody else have one? Oh, Deanna just jumped on. Welcome to our team, Deanna. We're just talking about you. <laughs> I have Sarah, who is a new coach, too. I just joined. Yay! Sarah's awesome. Yep. She's one of my our challenge groups. Welcome to our team, Sarah. All right. Anybody else before I go on through my lovely list of beautiful ladies? No? All right. Well, I have five new women.
women to introduce to Team Simply Beautiful, and they are all stemming from my friends group, which is amazing. So I've like been introducing them in our team page as like Team Joey and Team Monica, Team Rachel, all them because they're literally kicking butt. So I want to welcome on. I'm gonna first shout out the two that I see so far. So welcome to our team, Rachel. Super excited, Rachel Dennison's here. Um, she is an incredible person, and we've had the privilege of getting to know each other over the past couple weeks. And she and I are we hit it off, and I'm just super excited. She actually joined up in our, our wine and why night last week, and she was just amazing. So welcome to our team. I see Sam on here too. Welcome to our team, Sam. Um, Sam actually, um, her coach was underneath me and quit, and so Sam, I kind of adopted Sam, and I'm really excited that I did because she is now. Um, one of my PS coaches, and I'm excited to help her launch her business too. Um, don't see the other three on here, but I'm going to introduce them. Stephanie Ortega, um, Lena, and Courtney. Those are my other three new coaches, and I'm really super pumped to get all three or all five of you started. I, I put all of you guys into our new coach page, and we're going to take it slow. And we're going to get you launched, and I'm really super freaking pumped. So welcome to – we just – that was a lot of people, and that is exciting stuff to see all those new people get introduced tonight. Um, does anybody have any rank advancements for this week? Or any recognition? Oh, I do. I forgot I had one. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? Why did I swear? Emily. Emily is going to be popping Ruby tomorrow. And Ruby is such a rare rank because usually you go from Emerald to Diamond. Um, Emily is still pushing tonight because she's trying to lock in Diamond tomorrow. But um, right now, we, we have our first Ruby coach on our team. So congratulations to Emily. I'm so excited to make that announcement tomorrow. So way to go. Anybody else have anything or anything you want to recognize anybody for? All right. All right. Last thing I'm going to do before I pass it over to Jess for our incredible talk tonight, which I'm so excited about. Um, you guys have heard me talk about this for the past week, but I have to. I'm so sorry. Success Club. How many of you are on the board right now and don't have it locked in? Are on the board. All right. How many of you are at zero right now? How many of you are at negative two right now? Good. It happens. I'm telling you, it's the worst whenever that happens. Um, okay. It is not over until it is over. And I'm going to use her as an example for the 45th time. The Katie Ann hit successful bait in six hours. <laughs> six hours. Okay. January. I hit Success Club at 10, 30, 34, or something like that. Success Club 10 was at night, the last day of the month. You know, if you are okay with, with falling short, that's on you. But if you are not okay with falling short, take this as my official kick in the butt to help somebody in the next couple of days. We know that we, what we have works, guys. We know that, and we know that we can literally give somebody a gift. Somebody a gift to join us, and it literally not only helps you move your business forward, but you get to help somebody change their lives. So what I want you guys to do is to get out of the mindset that this is hard, get out of the mindset that you can't, get out of the mindset that, hey, April's in a couple days, so I'll try again then. Get out of that mindset, because here's the thing. Every single time that we are pushing it off, every single time that you tell yourself you can't, you're giving yourself a little strike on the negativity board. You're telling yourself that you literally like, okay, you know what? Maybe next month. We don't want to have that mindset, not in just this business, but in life. Can you imagine if like you literally went into your, your full-time job and we're just like, nah, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to hit my goals this month. I'll do it in April or whatever. You know, I'm not going to, if you're, if you're a student and you're like, I'm just, you know, I'm not going to turn this in. I just, I just don't feel like doing this, you know? We don't want to have that mindset in any part of our lives. We want to make sure that at least, like, the thing is, is, like, I don't give a shit if you fall short as long as you go down swinging. Like, you, you went to the end and saying, I'm going to do whatever I possibly can to make it happen. So that's just my, I, I'm not going to go into this because, I mean, you have to want it for yourself. I can't make you want to accomplish that. I can't make you want it to be a priority of yours. But what I can do is tell you that it's important. I can tell you that you have time, lots of time. And I can tell you that if you want it bad enough, you will find a way. And it starts with belief. And, no, and first off, like, I can look at you in the eyes and I can look, I'm looking at every single one of you in your little boxes and I can tell you I believe in you. But you have to believe in yourself and believe that you can do it. And I promise you that you will. So with that said, 
I am so excited to introduce one of my dear friends. Um, she is also on Misfit Legion. She's also one of Natalie's PS coaches. And um, it's funny because she and I met a long time ago and she actually didn't even realize that she met me back then because that's how little I was. This is little girl that walked into Kegler Sports Bar in Morgantown, asked Doug, you guys don't know who Doug is, but I asked him for a job and he gave it to me. And Jess was one of the managers there at the time. She ended up quitting because she got pregnant with her first child, <laughs> which is hilarious. Um, but yeah, we worked together for just a, just a little bit. And who would have known that the stars would align and bring us back together years later because of this opportunity and through Natalie Bailey, which is incredible. So Jess and I, um, we, we, kn we knew each other, but it was Natalie's diamond retreat. I think that like really got her and I to sit down and be like, wow, like we have a lot in common. And like, she is total mom goals, like total mom goals, like the freaking post baby body, the freaking like attitude and just the way that she balances everything. Three kids, a little one in her arms, two running around. I mean, she just, she does it all. And it's honestly so admirable to me. Like it could be, and I posted this on our team page when I introduced you this morning, Jess, I was like, you know, it's, it's so easy for you to take that and make that your excuse. The fact that your life is crazy, the fact that you have three kids, the fact that you're trying to be a good wife and every single day you still show up and you're hitting between success club 12 to 30 every single month and you're helping people and you're helping people lose, have, get incredible transformations and this stuff. Diamond Coach ranks 223 in the entire network. That is insane out of 450,000 coaches. Um, she surpassed her teaching income and she is on the road. Her and her team are shooting for elite this year. And as you guys know, that's a really huge accomplishment. And that's something that um, every single one of us should be shooting for. So Jess, without further ado, um, we're so excited to hear your story and, and how, you, how you do it all. So welcome to our team call. Oh, yay, Kelsey. Thank you so much for having me. And it's funny that you mentioned, you know, my struggles and, and all of that fun stuff and how we met at Keglers and all that stuff. Because I'm actually going to give you guys a little bit of my background history so you guys can understand, like, how I finally nixed the yo-yoing with this business. And I really just had to call myself out along with all of my excuses. So, but first I have to go ahead and give Kelsey a huge shout out because guys, you have one of the most fearless leaders in this business. I mean, she is truly a rock star. She creates systems that are definitely duplicable and she just, she's someone to truly watch. So the fact that you guys have her as your coach, your upline, take notice of that. The shit that she tells you is legit and it will make you successful because clearly look at her. So how to say that about you, Kelsey. Um, all right, guys. So like Kelsey said, I am a stay-at-home mom to three kids. I have a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. So they're all extremely tiny. Um, <laughs> I have a degree in child development and family studies. I graduated um, at WVU. Children are my heart, my soul, my passion. Um, I knew growing up whenever I was younger, like being a mom and being around children was always just like my cup of tea. Um, just the essence of their being and just, I just felt like I could connect with children on a different level. I don't know what it was. I knew that I wanted to teach them, but I knew I wanted them when they were extremely young and out of the gate. Um, so hence my degree in child development and family studies. Um, but while I was getting my degree, I was actually um, working at a bar at Kegler's. <laughs> I was working, um, you know, full-time crazy hours. I worked 18 plus hours, um, you know, going to school, getting my degree. Plus, I would work five, six nights at Kegler's. Plus, I would do day shifts. Um, so I was just that, that crazy girl. Like I stayed, um, extremely busy. I knew that I had to make money while I went to college. I was my main supporter. So guys, you do what you do. You have to get shit done. Um, but life happened. I got married. Um, and I thought around that time after I got married, it was time for me to step out into the big girl world. And, you know, really start using my degree because I didn't want to be in the bar scene anymore, even though I was a manager. But as I was going around to all these different jobs, um, you know, the income wasn't there. <laughs> I, what I made at Kegler's at the sports bar on top of my management wage, nothing was even coming remotely close to what my college education could pay me in the big girl job, in the big girl world is what I'm going to call it. Um, but 
Um, so after I got pregnant, I still worked in the bar scene and you know what? I loved it. I owned it. I brought home bank and you know, I wrote my own schedule. Doug, let me do it. <laughs> I was like, this is awesome. I'm never quitting. Um, but guys, once again, life happened. I got pregnant and that's when I was like, holy shit, there is no way I can be walking around in a bar with a big ass belly. And at the time people were still allowed smoking in the bar scene. And I'm like, this is not what I want for my life. So I did, I put in my two weeks notice right then and there. And I was hell bent on finding my dream job. So I actually landed this job at Choosy Kids, and it was all about ending childhood obesity. I was like, oh my goodness, this is going to be my jam. I love it. I love what it stands for. Well, I'm not sure if you guys have experienced this or not, but sometimes the corporate world, um, you know, the people you work with can be jerks. I had this one girl that was extremely mean to me every single day, and here I am. I'm like, I'm a nice girl. Why does she hate me? Why is she treating me this way? And honestly, it was because of her why I quit, because, you know, the corporate office, like, they allowed her to treat me that way, and, like, every day I would leave in tears, even knew I truly believed in my mission there and how I could help end childhood obesity. It wasn't worth it to me and it wasn't worth the heartache. Um, so I actually ended up landing another gig at um, a Catholic school when I was their event coordinator. I would um, go ahead and coordinate all the after school activities and I worked with kids of all ranges from preschool clear up to eighth grade. I loved it, but then a preschool position opened up, which they're extremely hard to find and come by. Um, it opened up, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is perfect. I'm going to be able to teach preschool right before my daughter comes. I'm going to have a perfect schedule. Um, you know, all is well in the world, right? So I had my daughter, and I went back to work, but there was this funny thing that after I went back to work, after I had my daughter, um, I thought I had the perfect schedule because, you know, I thought that, you know, she would be coming to school with me. You know how we all say, like, I got the perfect job, I'm a school teacher, um, because now my kids can come to school when I go to school. Well, when they're newborn guys, that doesn't happen. And I have to say, it tore me apart like nobody's business. I would leave my house every single day bawling my eyes out. And I'm like, oh my goodness, how am I leaving my baby? And the funny part was I was leaving her with my husband. <laughs> Um, my husband actually worked afternoon shift and we had, um, you know, the perfect schedule. He, um, we only needed a babysitter for about 30 minutes out of the day, but it meant that my husband and I no longer saw each other at all. Maybe once a week, we would literally sit down and maybe have dinner together. But once you have kids, life is no longer about you. It's all about providing for them. So we did what we thought was best for her. Um, but whenever I got to school, guys, I was actually that crazy mom. I had um, her monitor on my phone. So I would keep it on the full entire time while I was at work. And my husband would get these crazy cell phone bills to where we were over our data. And he was like, what in the world are you doing? How are you using this much data? And I wasn't about to be like, well, I was creeping on you, you know, <laughs> making sure you were up when our daughter was up. I trusted him. But when you're a mom, like, you know, everything about the child, you know how to kiss the boo-boos, you know how to make everything all better. You know what time they need to eat. So just to give that up being a mom, like I'm very, um, I guess you could say, obsessive. Um, I needed to be in control of my daughter. So, but then the funny thing was, it's like I was able to watch my daughter on this monitor. But as soon as I got home, once again, I was beating myself up because now I'm like, oh my goodness, I just had 25 students that I did not give my heart to. I, here I am, I have my, my monitor basically like always in the background, so I heard that crackling noise and that's where like my heart was at the time, but here I didn't give my kids the full attention and devotion that they deserved being children. So it was this vicious cycle that I was playing on my heart, always crying, always beating myself up because I'm like, I wanna be with my daughter, but then I'm not giving these children my time, it's my dream job. You know, it, it just became so hectic and I was stressed out to the max, I just personally could not handle it. Um, then around this time, I got pregnant with my second child and I just like fell to the floor, <laughs> I'm like, Babe, I cannot do this. I have, you know, I can hardly leave our one child, and now we have two. 
what am I going to do? And then I started playing in my mind because I'm a people pleaser at heart. Now what is my boss gonna think of me, the principal? Here I am, I only like technically put in one year. He gave me this position, he trusted in me to fulfill this job and now I am quitting. And then finally, and, and it was like a vicious cycle with myself and finally he stepped in and he's like, you're crazy. He's like, you're not going to work. We, we did the math of our income and straight up 100% of my, che my paycheck would be going to daycare because by this time we were like, we can't do it. We actually lost our babysitter because she was moving. And then he's like, it's not an option. You have to quit. You're going to be a stay at home mom. So I was like, okay. It, it's kind of just like, oh, a ton of bricks were lifted off my shoulders. I was like, all is well in the world. And you know, it's going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Um, but the funny thing is when you have two kids and I've been working since I've been 14, you know, something in me, I just felt like I needed to contribute more. Um, I just felt like whenever I woke up, I was, I just felt empty, unfulfilled. And I just felt like I could do more with myself. So I started my own in-home daycare and I brought on about five, six other kids. <laughs> and, you know, I would do that along with watch my own children. Um, but guys, still something in my heart was missing. Still something, you know, two kids, I wanted to get my body back. And at this time, my coach reached out to me because she knew that I did at-home workout programs while I was in college. I, like I told you guys earlier, I was that girl I had 18 plus hours in college and then I would work crazy night shifts in the bar. So at-home workouts have always been my jam. Slim and Six, has anyone ever done it before? like right here. Okay, guys, that was me in my college days. I have always been a believer in these programs. So whenever Natalie reached out to me, she probably felt like I was a no brainer because I love these programs. And I actually bought P90X3 off of her in Shakeology, the challenge pack. And guess what I did? <laughs> I returned it. <laughs> I knew what I wanted out of an at-home workout program and certain trainers speak to me and guys, Tony wasn't it for me. Tony was not it. So I returned it. I felt, I feel horrible now looking back on it, knowing what happens. God bless her. <laughs> but um, it ended up working out because you know how we see those infomercials for Beachbody at nighttime. And I saw this infomercial for the 21 day fix. And it was talking about these portion control t containers and 30 minute workouts that are great for busy people. And my mind instantly went to my mom. I was like, okay, um, my mom needs help with portion control. I am going to get this program for her and I am going to do the 30 minute workouts and get my mom bod. So that's what we did. The package came in the mail. My mom hiked down to um, Morgantown and we opened up the box together. Um, and you know, at first it's kind of like overwhelming. It's just like, you're pulling out all these little small portion control containers. And what I wanted to do was just help her. So we go through the booklet and we're doing everything to a T we do her measurements and all of that stuff. And I'm like, we actually even write her a food list. And then I'm like, mom, there has to be another way for me to help you stay on track. So I go ahead and I go to my apps and I'm searching like for 21 day fix apps. I found one to help her count her containers. We downloaded it and I'll never forget this motion, this moment of my life because I feel like it completely changed me. And Kelsey, you probably knew I was going to cry on this call. So, <laughs> um, she goes to, you know, put in her weight to calculate the containers and, um, the app wouldn't allow her to put her weight in. And she just basically collapsed at the table. And she was like, Jess, something's wrong with this app. It won't let me put my weight in. Well, what really happened was the app didn't go past her weight. Like there was a cap off amount and she exceeded that. So now I felt like the world's biggest asshole. And I'm like, oh my God, mom, I'm so sorry. We'll fix it. I'm like, you're on the highest containers. That's just what we're going to focus on. Don't worry about putting your weight on or putting your weight in. And it was just that moment. Like I just, I felt her frustration with herself, how she just didn't want to believe in herself. And so badly, I just wanted her to see herself the way that I have seen her my whole entire life.
So I just told her, I was like, mom, we're going to do this. We're going to do this together and we're going to make this happen. So the first month that she did the 21 day fix, she lost 24 pounds. Within four months, she lost 94 pounds. So right there, it's like, I now get to see my mom, like how I've always like truly envisioned her in my heart. Like she's no longer in hiding and, and like the 21 day fix gave her her life back. And growing up, it's crazy the things that you remember, but I always like, I've always been this, this picture girl, like even at a very young age, I would keep albums. And my mom would be the person that would grab you by the shirt and yank you so hard and throw your ass in front of her because she just wanted to hide. And I even remember back then, like, it broke my heart that she felt that way about herself. So now I have my mom sending me selfies of herself and she actually applied to get, um, the free t-shirt after she completed the program and she ordered a size large and she was sending me this selfie picture that said 21 day fix and she's like oh my god this shirt fits it fits do you believe it it fits so I was like oh my gosh I have to pay this gift forward I've I was already a believer in in you know the at-home workout programs but seeing what this gift has done for my mom it was a no brainer for me. And um, my coach reached out and she's like, hey, you should coach. And I was like, darn Skippy, what do I gotta do? So the first month I was a coach, I came out of the gate swinging. Um, I was straight up the inbox girl. I had no clue about social media. I was like, yeah, just did 21 day fix, whoop, whoop. Like that was me, no picture. I did like the, the crazy emojis and like the hand raising, you know, that was me. But I was the inbox girl. And um, I think the first month that I went ahead and decided to become a coach, I think I hit Success Club 22. And for several months, I would just, you know, I was at it. Like, I was on it. Um, but life got hectic. Two kids, husband, never home. I'd stop for a month or two. And when life was good, I'd pick this business back up. But when I say that I quit, I meant that I quit hitting success club. My challengers is something that I take extreme pride in. Like when you become a challenger with me, you become a challenger for life and I will see your damn ass every single day. Or I should say, I'm going to show up for you every single day, whether you show up for yourself or not. So, but so anyways, like I said, it's, I just quit hitting success club. I was still showing up in my challenge groups and I was still working that end of the stuff. I just quit bringing people into my business. <clears throat> But when life calmed down, I finally felt like, you know, I could go full speed again with coaching and I figured my shit out. Once again, I'd come out of the gate swinging. I'd go, I'd inbox people. I'd want to get challengers. I'd want to help change those lives. All was well. Then I got pregnant again. I'm on my third freaking child, guys. <laughs> um, you know, I got pregnant again. My husband got a new job. Um, we had to basically pick up and move, um, my forever home. Like the first house that we ever moved into, I thought was going to be like our forever dream home with our children. I was completely obsessed with it, but my husband was also a coal miner and still is. And that means that he has to go underground and it's something that terrifies the live in shit out of me. Do I have any coal miner wives on the call right now? Any coal miners? Um, so whenever he told me that he got an above ground job at a prep plant, which means he's still working with the coal mine, but he doesn't have to go like 600 feet underground. I was like, I'm sold. I don't care where we're moving. You tell me where you're moving. Good, Alicia, your dad. So you kind of get where I'm coming from. So we picked everything up and we didn't want to settle. So we went ahead and we just got this, you know, temporary place that we could rent out. Um, once we got all settled in, I got the boxes all moved in. I was like, all right, yeah, I got this. I'm going to go coaching full speed again. Um, and I was at it for about two months and then we found our forever home and I dropped everything guys. I was a chronic quitter and my coach probably wanted to beat me with a goddamn bat. <laughs> Um, but anyways, so around this time, it was like two moves within three months and me being seven months pregnant with two toddlers. I was stressed out to the max. Our house actually got foreclosed on 
after we already moved into it and put in a, a huge chunk of money. We were told by the bank that our house wasn't considered marketable because it didn't have siding on it. So we completely did that along with, you know, replaced all the carpet. I was like down on my hands and knees, seven months pregnant, scrubbing baseboards, just nesting. Um, if you guys are a mom, you know what that nesting period's like. You just want everything perfect for that new baby to come into your home. Um, <coughs> but I don't know guys, like my life, I felt like it was consumed with calls to lawyers, pleads. Like I said, nesting. I started eating out at Burger King every single day. Original chicken sandwiches were my jam. Um, you know, and I literally stopped everything that I learned with this business. Like I quit doing me. I quit doing personal development whenever I needed it the most. And I became extremely depressed with a baby inside me with two toddlers. And I just started thinking to myself, like I even started giving up on my challenges. I'm like, how can I be the light in someone else's life if I can't be it in my own? And I really started playing that woes me card, you know? Um, but I'm happy to say like one month after I had my third baby, we actually closed on the house. And, um, you know, you thought that, you know, all of this stress would be lifted off your shoulders. But guys, like, I can't lie. Like, I woke up the next morning and I felt so depressed, extremely unfulfilled. And it's like, it's this funny thing whenever you have kids. It's like, you have this newfound love. It's an untouchable, it's an untouchable love that, like, your husband doesn't even come near to, to touching. It's insane. But yet you, and from feeling that, you feel such this incredible sense of guilt because you have these feelings and it's such this vicious cycle and you think that you're going to be so happy, but you feel so empty inside and you do, you feel so ashamed of your feelings. And I started to think, you know, what would others think of me? Like, um, like the world's most precious gift, like God's most precious gift here on earth. I was blessed with three of them. And I feel so lost and I feel so empty. <clears throat> um, but guys, it's like, it's the funny thing, like with moms, because you're so obsessed with your kids and doing everything that's good for your kids. Like your health completely goes out the windows, your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations for your life. You just stop all for a good reason. But guys, I'm here to tell you, they're all lame ass excuses. They really are. Um, so guys, whenever I had these feelings, you know, of how I just listened on how I just felt to you, guess what slapped me in the face? My annoyingly consistent coach that I just wanted to take her by the neck and be like, what is wrong with you? Like, how do you keep showing up? Um, and I'm not going to lie. Like, I literally just wanted to go slap her. Like, that's how bad. But I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, this is slapping me in the face for a reason. So at that time, I made a promise to myself that I would figure my shit out. And I knew since I yo-yoed so much with this business that something had to change. I kept on having these feelings of being empty inside for a reason. And I knew the first thing that I had to change was my consistency in this business. And the number one thing that my coach showed me was being inconsistent will definitely win the race. And uh, you know what I learned was I let this series of events define me and get the best of me. And I did not for one single second control my life. And I let my life control me. And that was the very first mistake that I made. And I, and I have to say, like, whenever I talk to people, I'm a firm believer, like everything in life happens for a reason, you know, but here I was stressing over the uncontrollable guys, you cannot control the uncontrollable. And that's exactly what I was trying to do. So I went ahead and wrote down my biggest takeaways from, you know, everything that I learned from my journey of yo-yoing. And the biggest thing, the number one thing um, that I learned was my mindset, guys. Um, come into this business with the mindset that you have a million dollar business because guess what you do? There are people in this business that make a million freaking dollars and then some in two different accounts. Okay. Um, but the problem is the investment is so small. The investment is a $140 challenge pack, and that is an investment in yourself, and there's not much that skin in the game, and that's why people dabble.
That's why people dabble and they have a plan B and they don't take it that seriously. So that's my first one. Number two was, and you guys have heard this time and time again, develop your why. I know. But guess what I never did when I heard it over and over and over again? I never developed it. I was that person that said, I want to help people. <laughs> it's my out for being a stay-at-home mom. And guys, you could clearly tell that was not enough skin in the game for me. I did not develop a why strong enough that kept me going when times got tough. So you definitely need to develop your why and you need to do it tonight if you had a why like mine. If your why was, you know, I just want to help people, it's, it's my out for being a stay-at-home mom. Guys, life is going to get tough. It's only going to get tougher. So what is your why that is going to keep you holding on and to keep on showing up? Um, so I started thinking to myself, what happens if I stop showing up? What happens if I stop? And I have to say this. Um, I'm very blessed with Toby. Like, we do not need the beach body income to survive financially. Yes, we can pay off things sooner. Yes, we can get out of debt sooner. But financially, like, we are okay. But, guys, like I said, that part of me being working since I've been 14, I can't help but to still take ownership of my own life. And... I'm not usually someone that thinks the worst, but guys, when you have kids, it's a new ball game. That's ownership on your life. And I would hate to think for a single second, what would happen if something ever happened to Toby? Where would my life be with three kids? And guys, I had a scare of a lifetime too this year. My husband had pneumonia of 107 degree fever. He was literally on his deathbed, and the doctor said, you are lucky you got here when you did. And that was another wake-up call for me. I'm like, holy shit, nothing in life is guaranteed. And once again, I'm going to say it, it's ownership of your own life. <clears throat> um, and guys, um, also, too, my dad was somebody that was never home. He worked and worked and worked his life away. And I can't help but to have that guilt on my shoulders that I created that type of life for Toby. Then now he works. The other day he put in 24 hours. Straight. Straight. So I can't help but to think that, you know, that we created that for him. So I'll be damned if I'm going to continue to let that happen. <clears throat> um, three is, you know, make short-term and long-term goals your non-negotiables. Once again, probably something that you heard, but your very first goal should be success club, success club five, success club 10, whatever you think that it should be, but at least needs to be over five because, and I know Kelsey preaches this success club is the heart of this business. You quit hitting success club, you quit having a business. And I quickly realized that for as much as I yo-yo. Um, and I have to say, too, guys, I hit diamond rank like three different times and lost it all three different times, all because I yo-yoed. If I would have just stayed consistent, God only knows where I would be right now. <clears throat> Plus, it's also a funny story. Each time I yo-yoed with this business, I always saw a coach come out of the gate swinging um, and become a truly successful coach. And it's funny because it was actually somebody that I recently talked to about, you know, a challenge pack. And I'm like, damn. That stings. That should have been my coach. <laughs> so guys, that's the power too of consistency. Um, four is run your own race and stop comparing. I compared myself to a lot of coaches and especially my coach. Um, I, like I said before, I sucked at social media. And here I saw all of these elaborate posts that all these other coaches would make. And I'd be like, God damn, they're a journalist. Like, I can't be that. Like, I can't write these long, thoughtful, you know, posts. Like, I feel like I'm squirrel every two seconds, like changing diapers, puke all over me. I'm like, I cannot keep a thought straight for a second. Like, how can I write something as beautiful as what they just wrote? Um, but guys, once again, it was an excuse. <laughs> um, you know what I made excuses for myself? They're not a mom. <laughs> um, they don't know what it's like to be me. 
I'm extremely busy. They don't have any kids. Then, well, guys, I found out there was a top coach that was also a mom of three. And I was like, well, <laughs> got to kick that one in the butt now. <laughs> Clearly, someone else can make it work. So, guys, you got to throw all them excuses out the door. And it wasn't until I started doing me and not worrying and comparing myself to other coaches that I started to find my jam. When I stopped, you know, what do you want to call it? Stalking the other coaches, seeing what they wrote that day and trying to mock what they wrote and trying to be someone that you're truly not. Like guys, I am a fun, quirky, silly, make fun of myself type of girl. And you know, I can be extremely sappy. And that's not, you know, my coach or the other coaches that I was looking at. And I found that I really needed to start being true to my voice, my words. And that's how I was going to bring people on. Um, so find your jam with your social media and quit thinking you need to be like other coaches. Um, personal development. <laughs> um, so crucial to your business and honestly, even your life. When I needed personal development the most is when I forgot that it even existed. Completely threw it out the door. Didn't even remember that, you know, that, hey, over here, personal development can save your life. Um, Les Brown and Tony Robbins. Um, have any, has anybody ever listened to them before? Obsessed. Truly obsessed with them. Whenever I work out, I usually put them on YouTube and I listen to them. Um, but they taught me a very, well, a few very valuable lessons. And one is um, if you're not being successful at anything in life, it's due to your lack of resourcefulness. It's not your coach. You know, you, you actually don't even need a coach to be successful in this business. Does it make things easier? Hell yes, I'd say probably easier, but you don't need them to be successful because all of the tools are out there to make you succeed. Your back office actually has it all. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and I also learned that there's no need to rewrite the beach body coaching book. Um, I was that person that I thought that I had to rewrite every last system. And I learned quickly that I didn't have to do that. And also, they taught me that if you want to be the best, follow the best. So the first thing that I did was I was like, who's the best of the best of the best at beach body coaching? So the number one coach, Melanie Mitro. So in my downtime, whenever I was, you know, yo-yoing, I was seeing what she was doing. And by George, by 7 a.m. every single morning, Melanie Mitro has up her morning workout. And I started thinking to myself, hot damn, Jess, you work out five to six times out of the week, start posting it. The simplest things I would overlook in my business, and it just, it's the things now that I do that has truly created the most success for me. Um, so yeah, I was like, well, I can do that. <laughs> we got this. Post your workout every damn day. Got it. <laughs> um, six is stop overcomplicating. Find your own jam. That is my saying. Find your jam. I started to measure my success by the people coming in my beach body door. When people stop coming in my beach body door is when I'll reevaluate my business. I would determine my success by the type of by the number of likes I got or if my coach would like my post. That meant that I was doing well. No guys. People coming in your beach body door should be your measure of success. And I quickly, quickly realized that. And whenever I started getting into the mindset, like, okay, people want me. Challengers, you know, they need my help. That's when I started realizing, you know, that is the true measure of success is people coming in your door. <coughs> um, let's see here. What else do I got? Um, stop with the I can'ts and start saying I don't believe in myself because that's what it boils down to. So whenever I start having these like moments of self-doubt and I start creating all of those lame ass excuses that I told you guys earlier, I started saying to myself, all right, Jess, so you're saying that you truly don't believe in yourself. And guys, it kicks me in the butt every single time. <clears throat> Um, eight is believe in yourself and the power of your voice and what you have to offer. Confidence. 
I know I'm 100% successful at getting challengers because I believe in the power of my voice and I know of the power behind the programs. I know that I can transform someone's life with what I have to offer them. And that comes across to my messages. And that's how I hit Success Club every single month. Um, and then from there, those people that get transformations, guess who becomes coaches? Those people. Um, and we all know too, guys, sometimes it is, it's just hard to stay motivated. So what I would do is um, I would start printing out these beautiful messages that my coaches and my challengers sent me that would just like leave me bawling. So I'm not sure if you guys, that's my huge whiteboard in the background. But what I did was over there, I would just, you know, copy and paste them on a piece of paper and I hang them up there. So whenever I feel like I'm getting down or like, you know, can I really do this day in and day out? I remember those lives that I touch. And I have to say it truly, truly keeps me going too. So print out those beautiful things that people start to say to you. And if they haven't yet, trust me, they will. <clears throat> and um, I'm not sure if I should say this or not, but I'm going to. And I'm sure, I don't know. <laughs> don't be a jerk don't be a jerk like I was a jerk reach out when you feel lost and do not fall off the face of this earth your coach Kelsey wants to be there for you but you have to let them in I was so ignorant to the fact that I just left Natalie my coach in the dark I didn't cure in what was going on in my life I didn't you know say anything to her I just like straight up quit cold turkey and it kills me so much and eats me alive looking back on it how incredibly rude I was plus now thinking about it I know she could have offered me words of advice words of wisdom because I guarantee you that, that she's probably thought about quitting before and she's been there, done that. Therefore, she can help coach me through what I was personally going through. So do not be a jerk. <laughs> um, use your damn social media. Guys, like I said, this was something hard for me to grasp for some reason. I just couldn't get a hang of it. Um, but I have to say, whenever I started, um, you know, becoming more comfortable in my voice, you know, on social media, Success Club became that much easier for me. I didn't have to explain as much behind the screens. Plus, that creates the credibility for yourself. People creep. Raise your hand if you've creeped before. Has anyone? <laughs> Exactly. People creep. They want to know what you're doing. So when you go invite them to a challenge group, you best believe they're going to your page and seeing what the hell you're doing. So if you have a transformation picture up and they see it, they're like, darn skippy, I'm going with this girl. She knows what she's doing. So <coughs> definitely lose, um, use your social media. Um, 11, and this is my last one. Um, you will always hold the power to your own life. So do it. Guys, like I said, all of the events, moving, having kids, being stressed to the max, they were all lame ass excuses to why this business wasn't working for me. And I can say that proudly now. If I could go back and tell the old dress Jess to like quit, I would tell her to quit giving up on herself so damn much. And I would literally tell her every last thing that I told you guys. <clears throat> and I would tell her that, you know, nothing worth having comes easy. Nothing worth coming, nothing worth having ever comes easy. Um, and, you know, Kelsey gave you my stats earlier. But guys, I was this close each time to seeing true success, this close to like surpassing my teaching income, this close to getting that rock star coach that ended up going with someone else, this close. Um, and each time I had to completely rebuild my business. Don't, don't be me. Don't be me. You know, it's been over a year since I founded Team Exist and I created my page, my Team Exist page, and it's been a whole new ball game. Um, and guys now, now being ranked 223 in the entire, entire network, um, guys, it's only going from the top from here. It's only going to the top from here. So 
guys, that's basically what I have. I hope that it was able to speak to your hearts in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> but Kelsey, that's what I got. That was amazing, Jess. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think that's something that like we all like need to hear too, because I mean, I feel like we all, like, I mean, you guys have probably all heard the consistency topic before, right? Why it's so important to stay consistent, to stay consistent. But I think like that is like a whole new way of looking at it. Look at somebody that literally stopped being consistent. She just gave you it straight up on what happens every single time that you give up on yourself. Despite life's obstacles, like how many of you on here are moms? And we have a lot of moms on our team. How many of you in here are moms? So I'm sure a lot of that spoke to you guys, right? The time and like using like your kids as your excuses and um, somebody out there that works full time. I get, we get it, right? We get it. I totally understand, and I know Jess can relate on the fact that time is so limited, but it's about what you do with the time that you have, and from what Jess just threw, showed us is like, every single thing, how many of you, and I'm going to go through what Jess said, and I want you guys to be honest really quick. How many of you are, you, are using, I, I can't post like her as an excuse, raise your hand. How many of you are using, life is just too crazy right now? How many of you are using, I'm just so unhappy right now? How many are using, um, I don't have anything to offer to my people? How many of you are telling yourselves that you can't? I'm not good at hitting success club. I can't do this. How many of you guys are not reading personal development right now? And be honest. There is your problem. How many of you guys are comparing to other coaches? You guys see where we're going with this? Those are giant roadblocks. Giant roadblocks in the way. And one thing that I wrote down, something that you said, Jess, um, was number four, when you're talking about running your own race and stop comparing. And I heard this quote, and I thought it fit so well with that. Every excuse you make is one that a top coach could have used but didn't. Isn't that crazy? Everything that you guys just admitted, I have felt before. I'm sure Melanie Mitchell has felt before. I'm sure um, Megan Ewaldson has felt before. I'm sure Bonnie Engel has felt before. I'm sure Jamie Fitzpatrick has felt before. Go through the top 10 coaches, and I bet you if you message any single one of them, they could have used any of those excuses that I just pulled off. But Jess, I'm so glad that you came on tonight and shared, and shared this perspective, because honestly, I don't think that we've ever heard it from somebody that has gone back and forth and back and forth. Did this help, guys? Go ahead, Jess, sorry. Oh, no. Guys, like, yo-yoing is not something that I am proud of, but it's like you just know in your heart when you're meant for more. And I knew that this business was my jam, but for some reason, I, and I, and it's so funny, I always told Natalie this, my coach, I just feel like I'm this close. I'm just like this close. And she's like, I swear, like when I say she wanted to get a bat, she probably wanted to like get a bat and like kill me because <laughs> it's like when other people see it in you, you just don't see it in yourself. And it's because you do, you create these excuses and these elaborate stories in your mind and what they are is their excuses and you're not applying the vital behaviors. Cause I'm telling you someone out there, you know, has another kid and they're making this business more successful than what I am. Someone else is a lot busier than me. that's making this business work, but I wasn't. And I started playing those thoughts in my head. Like if you want to be successful at something, you will be successful at something. If you make something important and if it's important to you, you will make it work. I did not make this business a priority when I should have guys, my five year plan is to retire my husband's ass along with my dad's. And I say five years now proudly because I know that's when all of my kids asses will be in school <laughs> and I am going to work day in and day out for five straight years so that I have enough income to make that happen. You'll do it too. I know for sure you will. That's I'm like this, I'm like saying that leg, strong leg volume at the retreat and wanting to cry. <laughs> Well, is it? <laughs> Especially after seeing your uh, strong leg volume at the retreat and almost passing out. <laughs> you would die now if you saw it. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, this was, this was, I hope this was as eye-opening for you guys as it was for me. 
Um, and I t I'm going to post this recording on our team page, and, and I would like you guys to share the one excuse that's going through your mind right now that's holding you back. And like I said, I know, I know that number nine was a touchy subject and not being a jerk, but it's true. Like, I can't read your mind. Your coach can't read your mind. If you fall off, like, basically, it's just – it's, it hurts, you know? And I know that I say this to my PS coaches all the time, but the biggest slap in the face to me is me investing a ton of time and then my thank you is a cancellation email. Like if you're going through stuff, you have to open up because I'm here to help you. If you're, if you're struggling with success, if you're feeling that fear, like I am here, your coach is there for you. And like we have to get, I'm, I'm the, I was the same way with Natalie too. If shit was hitting the fan, I would be like, oh, I would just sit in my chair and I'd be like, oh my God, I just can't do this right now. And I wouldn't ask her for help. And that's the worst thing that you guys can do. So, any final thoughts, Jess? No, it's funny that you say that because I got a coach cancellation the other day and it was such a, like a gut punch. And I'm just like, damn, guess I deserved it to see what it felt like, but it stings and it stings and it's, and it's not because, and it's just because we believe in you guys so much and we want this business to work for you guys. And like Kelsey said, like we invest our time, our energy, and it's because we believe in you. So whenever that just happens, it's just kind of like, I now personally know what my coach felt like. And you know, and now if you have coaches underneath you, just imagine the shoot being on the other foot and it's just like, damn, I should have cued her in. I should have cued her in. Cause the thing is too, is we're better together. Like I am, I'm not your boss. I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to make you a to-do list every day and tell you, you have to do it. That's something that we all have to take ownership of our own. And like, I'll never be your boss. That's not the kind of girl I'm ever going to be, but I will be here to be your mentor and I will lead you. And I know that your coach is going to do the same if I am not your mentor. Like I am here for our entire downline. Even if you are not personally enrolled by me, like I have probably reached out to you at some point in time to say hi, to talk to you, to comment on one of your posts, to like something. Like I, have, I personally make sure that I do that because I do believe in you. But that means nothing if you don't believe in yourself. So I hope tonight you guys take what she says. I hope that you apply it. And I hope that you finish out this month so strong. And that you stop telling yourself tonight that you can't. And even if you're sitting on the board right now at zero, two, four, one, whatever you're at, I hope that you just keep going. And I hope that you believe in yourself and you take these excuses and put them aside. And I hope if you're a new coach right now, you're not ter terrified and going to quit after you got this call. <laughs> I, I'm so excited for where we're headed. And I'm telling you what, like, if you are ready to go, like, we're doing big things. You know, we're doing big things this year. This team is going back to the top. We are going elite times too. Like, we're doing big things this year. And I want every single one of you to be a part of it. The reality of it, and I just told my diamond coaches on our last call, the reality of it is the faces that are on this call right now will not be, a lot of them will not be here at the end of the year. But I'm telling you what, if you make the decision, if you can get off this call tonight and say, I will be here, I will overcome my excuses with work because it's not going to be, you're not going to go to sleep tonight and be like, I'm going to stop comparing. And then tomorrow, everything's roses and daisies. I know it takes work. But if you can commit to doing the work, you can commit to showing up and say, I will be here one year from now and you can show up every day, hit success, help your three to five people a month, your life is changed. It is changed. Jess is proof of that. I am proof of that. And we are no different than you. So I hope you guys take that message, and I hope that you, I'm excited to see what your guys' big takeaways were on our team page. Jess, I'll forward those on to you. They always share those. And guys, if you're, the last thing I'm gonna say and let you go, because I know it's past our time, the elite coach mentorship. If you are a new coach, please fill out that application to apply for that. Um, that is kicking off next Monday. Um, have your coaches apply for that. You guys, have been, who has ever has been through it, you know that that's really great training. Um, for my new coaches, obviously you're in my new coach page. We're having our separate training going on as well as your new coach training too. Um, the separate page is just so I can work closely with you. So that's why you're in that page. If you guys are wondering why you've been added to 500 pages, that one is just so I can closely with you and make sure that I'm getting you started right. So guys, our team is expanding. We're growing so big. Let's drop the excuses and let's finish March strong. Okay. Let's make this, let's make this one to remember. I know that our team has done some really weird shit in the last two days of the month. Let's, let's do that again. <laughs> guys, Jess, thank you so much. This was amazing. Good night, guys.